Little did Yukihita know he would be put to the test as soon as he got to his own dorm, and that test was to make something out of nothing, and this is exactly what he did with his mackerel burger. Just like Yukihita, when he was trying to enter Polar Star, desperate times call for desperate measures, and uh, doesn't get any more desperate than this. We're gonna make the mackerel burger with a few adjustments. There's, there's nothing at the stores, guys. So for your soup and stuff, you can use whatever dried ingredient you really want. And I have these mushrooms. I've had these mushrooms for probably two years now and I got them from Costco and now I have the chance to use them. So for this, I'm gonna use two cups worth of dried mushroom, six cups worth of water. You wanna do one part dried vegetable or mushroom to three parts water. Go ahead and poke these around so they're completely submerged. And we're gonna cook this for quite a while. So just, just let it hang out. Don't mess with it. Don't touch it. Seriously, it doesn't need any attention. Now for the star of the show, we gotta make our tuna mackerel style burger. For this, I'm just using canned tuna. This is about 12 ounces worth of it. I picked these up from a local shop just because there was a bunch of them and they were really cheap. After spending far too long looking for the can opener and finally finding it, we're gonna go ahead and drain out all of this fish juice. Yes, the fish juice sounds disgusting, but we do need this for our sauce. Get all of your tuna into your bowl and keep the fish juice completely separate for now. Next, we're gonna go ahead and small dice an onion. You can make these as small as you want, but you don't wanna make them too big, otherwise they won't incorporate properly into your actual tuna mackerel burger thing. For this tuna recipe, we're actually gonna be using one half of the onion, and just because I realized that this whole onion was too much, so we're gonna save the rest of it for some other thing. We're gonna use one egg to help bind all of this tuna, make sure Lucian gets fed later, and give this thing a good stir. I actually like to incorporate all of the egg before I add my second binder, which is going to be our panko or panko. For this, we're gonna use one half cup of dried panko. We're also gonna season it pretty liberally with some salt and black pepper because you want all those flavors to come through. Go ahead and start mixing this again until all of that panko is fully incorporated. Yes, I'm gonna give this a taste even though it has raw egg in it. It's fine for me. Just don't do it if you don't feel like doing it, but re-season it with salt and black pepper and make Make sure this continues to get incorporated so all of those juices get absorbed into the breadcrumb. Now how to tell if your panko panko is actually doing any work is if you take a handful of it and you squeeze it, you see all of this liquid actually dripping down, that means it hasn't absorbed it enough. So what you want to do is actually pat this thing down, make sure your hands get washed, and then go ahead and keep pressing it. You're eventually going to see it turn into more of a paste-like texture? That sounds gross. Now this should be ready to form into your patty. To form the patty, you can make these however big you want. We end up making this with about half the portion of the tuna we use, so almost about six ounces or more, depending on what you added to your patty. Get this thing nice and packed because there isn't a tremendous amount of binder in it. I wanted it a little bit bigger, so I used two thirds of the portion. So this is like nine ounces worth of tuna over here, but that's gonna be fine, it's, it's, it's okay. The reason why you want this totally packed in is because of the binder like we had mentioned and if it's not packed in properly, it will fall apart while you cook. So make sure this thing is nice. So this is something I've never done before. Fish tuna ponzu juice sauce? Like who came up with this? We're gonna use equal parts fish juice to equal parts ponzu. Now you can buy your own ponzu or you can use one cup of soy sauce, two juiced lemons, one juiced orange, and you have a little bit of a makeshift ponzu. Go ahead and add in your equal part of ponzu into your fish sauce and throw this onto the stove. Bring this up to a nice simmer. You wanna make sure that it's boiling before we add in our starch. This starch is one and a half tablespoons worth of potato starch and one tablespoon worth of water. Now, you may not need all of that starch. You wanna add enough to where it has a nice viscosity to it, to where it's nice and thick and creamy and delicious looking. That's, that's when it's done. Now for the shokugeki time, we're gonna go ahead and drain out all of the mushrooms from the broth. You can save these, I do save these mushrooms so I can use them for later for a puree or whatever the case is. Now, re-season your broth because it's probably gonna taste like dirty mushroom water without any seasoning. Throw this thing back on the stove, crack two eggs into a container, whatever container you want. It's easiest with a measuring cup because it has a little bit of a spout. Whisk them until they are completely whisked and slowly start pouring your eggs into your boiling liquid. It will start to cool down as you pour eggs in it, but it's fine. Just make sure it comes back up. 
This is how you're going to create your egg drop soup or how I create egg drop soup. It may be different for you, but this is how I've done it. Just make sure your liquid is hot enough. Now in a pan, we're gonna add in just a touch of oil of choice. It shouldn't matter which oil you use because it shouldn't get hot enough for it to burn. Take your patty, somehow get it off your plate. Look at this, nailed it, Na nailed it. Get it, off. get it off the spatula, get it off the, there it is, it's on the pan. Now you don't want to overcook this immediately. You don't actually want a hard sear it. You want it at a nice medium heat. Otherwise, all of that will start to burn very easily. You can't have this on a high heat. It will char before it actually gets nice and hot. Now look at that color. My, oh God, it makes me hungry looking at it. Just, it's so pretty, so gorgeous. You want that kind of color. And remember that medium heat is what is going to give it that crust. We're gonna, cook, we're gonna cook this for another five minutes on the back, so five minutes on each side, and just let it hang out on a low heat. This is going to keep it hot all the way through. Now plate up your soup in whatever bowl you want by first scooping out a lot of egg and then covering it with broth. I also made rice earlier. You guys don't need to see how to make rice in a rice steamer again, but just add some rice to a bowl for the set. And now for the coup de gras, the mackerel tuna patty. Look at this thing, it's massive, absolutely gorgeous. Insert Gordon Ramsay meme, get your sauce and drizzle it just lightly on top and spread it out quite a bit so that way it glazes the entire thing. Add as much sauce as you want and look at that glaze. It's done. We did it. The soup is ready. We got rice too. There it is guys, the Yuki Hida mackerel set. Now we did have to make some adjustments because well, lots of food isn't available, but we were able to do this with canned tuna, which is probably readily available anywhere you are. We also made a modification with the soup and used dried mushrooms as I had that laying around and I couldn't really find dried squid in my area. It's an unfortunate circumstance, but it does go to show you how versatile you can be with everything that you have. Let's try this. All right, I'm gonna go in on the soup first because the only thing with the, using the mushroom broth with the egg is that the eggs get a little bit dark, but it's not bad. Oh, my. oh, it's so good. The mushrooms actually give it this beautiful, like earthy flavor because there are a bunch of carminis in there. There's a bunch of shiitakes. There's a bunch of oyster mushrooms in there. Oh my, oh, this is delicious. Oh, I could eat this all day. Oh, wow. Oh, it's so good. Now we got to take care of this thing. This is super interesting to me because I have made things like this before and I will say they usually come out pretty good. We gonna find out. I mean, it's still super flaky. The sauce is glazed really nicely. And then you still have a crust from the actual searing, piping hot in the middle. It's exactly what you want. Look at that. Look at that piece. You would think that it would be overly fishy, but because of the ponzu and the citrus in the ponzu, it actually brightens it up a lot. This doesn't taste like canned tuna at this point. That's really weird. Okay, now I know why Fumio had a flashback to when she was younger and may or may not have, you know. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. What I will say is get subscribed dog. We're on Twitch for live Food Wars reactions for season five. What's your favorite way of eating tuna or mackerel? I still love me a good old tuna sandwich with a bunch of mayo and mustard in it. There's nothing wrong with that. My name is Chef PK here on Foodie Friday, bringing anime and video game food to life. Get subscribed and remember, keep playing with your food. This is like the, this is the epitome of playing with your food right here. Cap with the speech today, cut up in the rapture. I'm so out of line with the phrase game. Let's take a break, pin a long day. I'll eat the rice later.